Hi and welcome to the next section about persistence. In this section we're going to learn how we persist our business domain entities using JPA and how we can map entity relations to the database. Then we're going to see how we can include and configure our server data sources and we can handle our transactions and potential exceptions. And in this video we're going to see how we map our domain entities using JPA. Then we're going to see how we can bootstrap the JPA process for our server environment and how we can map identifiable business domain entities using JPA and the at entity annotation. And then we're going to see how we can use the entity manager as a repository. So now we have this car repojo that we were using the whole time in our application and we want to map this car to a database, to a table. And in order to bootstrap the JPA process in a server environment, we don't have to do much. We just have to configure one XML file, the persistence XML that resides under resources meter inf. So it will be residing at the proper place once we build our WAR file. And then we can just use the, the default here for persistence by having one persistent unit configured if we only include one database. And that's all we have to do here. Then we can go and define so-called entities. Entities map the domain-driven design ideas of entities, thus the same name, which are identifiable business domain entities. That means we specify at entity from JPA at some type and therefore make it an, a manageable and identifiable entity. In order to be identifiable, we have to have one property that acts as an ID, as a primary key in our database. For example, the identifier in our car or a specific um, ID. This will be annotated with add ID, therefore is now the ID of our entity. And then we could also annotate other properties. All of them will be mapped to the database table automatically, but we can also just use the default here. Similarly, we could annotate getters and setters instead of properties. And by specifying table, we can define the database table name where these cars will reside. And that's all we need for now. And then in order to retrieve our entities and to store them within our, our facade here, our boundary, we just use one functionality that comes with JPA, which is the so-called entity manager. So now we already have the core repository here, which basically acts as a facade in front of the manager. And here we have just dummy objects, but we don't need this repository anymore since Java EE already ships with the entity manager that acts as a repository. We acquire the entity manager by annotating at persistence context entity manager, and then we have an entity manager for the default persistence unit. We only have one persistence unit in our application, therefore we can just use the example as such. And then we call entity manager.persist on our entity, and then it's already persistent. And this manufacture car business method will be executed within a transaction. That means after that business method returns, the transaction will be committed to the database and then our car will be inserted in the database. Similarly, in order to retrieve cars, we can, we can call queries. For example, we can call create native queries, which just define any um, SQL string, or we define so-called named queries. And what named queries are, is that we can define named queries that are database queries with a specific query language and a name that can be acquired once they have been defined on an entity. For example, named query. We define a named query here with, for example, a name that can be inserted, for example, in a constant, such as find all cars. The string here just has to be unique. It doesn't matter what, what we name this. And then using a query. And the query, this is now so-called JPQL language. It's quite similar to, um, to SQL, but not identical. We call select C 
from car C. And by car, we define the type. That is the type of the car here. That is an entity. Select C from car C. And then we could say where C dot something, for example, C dot color equals something, or we just go with the default select all cars. And then we can use this name query here in our entity manager and say, please use this name query and also use it with a specific class. So once we get a result list that is now a typed list from, from JPA, that is already the proper generic for a list of cars. And therefore we load the cars and retrieve them from the database again. And that's all we have to do for the default example. This already works to map our, uh, our cards to the database.